Yo, what up, City Point? It is so, so good to be with you all. This is the kickoff to our new series, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. I've been looking forward to this for a long time, and we finally get a chance to do this series. Those of you that have listened to the album know that it is a classic. It is a, uh, a deep sonnet about love, about heartbreak, about being in love, about finding oneself, about self-actualization. And I want to get into all of that. And so we are, of course, doing it through preaching throughout this entire month, but we're also doing it through all kinds of other things that we're leveraging uh, social media for. So stay tuned, get tapped into our social, get tapped into the, engage, the, the community engagement that we're doing as well. It is going to be a really dope month. So looking forward to all that we have coming at you. I want to jump into a quick word of prayer and then we're going to jump right on into this word. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for all that we have already experienced in this service. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will speak to us from your word. God, speak to those that are trapped in relationships. God, speak to those that are struggling with love right now. I pray, God, your deliverance. I pray your power in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, so y'all remember the song X Factor, right? That is one of uh, one of the classics from the album. X, it was uh, X Factor from the Miseducation of Lauren Hill. I want to kick off the series talking about X Factor. So whether you are currently dealing with the X Factor, right? You are uh, in that sort of hard to say goodbye space as it relates to relationship, whether you are right there uh, currently, or if you just have memory of what that felt like, right? And you are trying to help other people extract themselves. Maybe it's one of your homies extract themselves from that situation. I think that this sermon is for you. So if you have not shared this out, be sure to share this out now because somebody needs to hear this aside from the folks that are in our community. So make sure that you do that. Let's look at Genesis chapter, uh, we're gonna uh, do Genesis chapter 12, verses one through three. And uh, I think there is a word there that will speak to us about the X factor. Genesis chapter 12 says, The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Verse 3 says, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. One more time for emphasis. Um, chapter 12, verse 1 says, The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. So I had this long-term relationship, right? And it was one of those off off and on and back off and back on type of relationships, right? And I want to say that this was probably like a five-year type of ordeal, right? Right? Like that is, as my testimony, I'm sure that it connects with some of you. Um, we would have our good times and then it would be like the same stuff would be our sticking point, right? We loved being together, but then there were times that we absolutely hated it and couldn't stand each other, right? And so this was probably after about our fourth or fifth time going through the breakup makeup kind of process that finally, like, I remember this night that I had this dream. I, I remember it nearly vividly, right? And it has been 20 years almost at this point. So I had this dream one night, and in this dream, God affected, so she was in the dream, and there were some other people that we knew in the dream, and like, I was like trying to save her, right? Like, I was, was doing all this stuff, like, like somebody was trying to like take her away or whatever, and I was like doing all this stuff, it almost looked like an action movie, where I was like trying to save this person that I was in, in this relationship with. And, and I remember vividly in this dream hearing a voice say, let her go, let her go, let her go. Three times. I woke up from that dream. Now, it is not every night that I remember the dream that I had, but, but there was a season in my life where God was speaking to me, and he still does it sometimes now, speaking to me through dreams, and I remember vividly like waking up and remembering the dream and totally understanding the interpretation of the dream. And so it wasn't, uh, it wasn't but a couple of days later that I got together with her. We went out to, uh, to eat some breakfast, and I told her that day, like, I can't do this no more. I gotta let you go. 
Now, we had gone through this, right, four or five times, the breakup makeup thing, right? Like, you break up, and then, like, the other person gets jealous that you are with somebody else or somebody is checking for you. And so all of a sudden, rather than you be with somebody else, they want to be with you. And they know the buttons to push, right? They know how to manipulate, right, to bring the relationship back together. We had had a series of four or five of this this time It was not about the drama in the relationship. It was not about those same old arguments. It was about God saying to me clearly, got to let her go. I still remember getting together, breakfast, telling her that I had that we just couldn't do this anymore. And I remember that feeling within me, right, that I was officially deciding to move on from this relationship. Because you know how it is with exes, right? Like you have that thing in your mind, right, that what if, right? Like what if I'm giving up too soon? What if this is really the stuff that love is made of? It is made of the long suffering and the endurance and the giving it another try and then everything ends happily ever after, right? That is that thing that sits in the back of your mind. And so you continue to go back to the ex and repeat that cycle over and over again. But this time I remember knowing in my heart that that was it. Abraham had a challenge of letting go. We pick up his story in Genesis chapter 12. Actually, just a few verses earlier earlier than that, we pick up the story of Abram or uh, Abraham or Abram as he is known at this particular time in scripture. Uh, We pick up his story there and he is called effectively to let go. But what he is called to let go of is not an X, but it is everything that he has come to know. Uh, Abraham is living in Ur of the Chaldeans, right? He is comfortable there. He is around the things that are familiar to him there. Abraham is around those things that are consistent to him. And God calls him out of this idol worshiping culture. God calls him out of everything that is familiar with him. Because he doesn't say just leave the culture. He says, I want you to leave the place, right? Leave the place you grew up at. Leave the people that you grew up around. Leave the area that is comfortable to you. Leave your family. Leave all of that behind. And I want you to go to a place that I am showing you. This effectively, like for me, like feels like that relationship that I let go of some some almost 20 years ago. Because it was not that God was saying, leave, it's time to let her go because of this other person that you have met, right? That you are interested in. No, it is letting go and it is treading water in the meantime. And let me say that for some of us, that is the reason that we never let go. And truth be told, for some of us, that is the reason why we are afraid of letting go. Because we are afraid of effectively being alone, being all by ourselves. And so rather than letting go, we decide that we are going to stay with a relationship that is toxic, that we are going to go back to something that we have already long ago decided was no good for us. We are deciding that we are going to pick up and try to salvage this relationship that we know is not going anywhere. It is because we are afraid of being alone. Abraham here is faced with this challenge. He is faced with this situation where he is being called by God to let go of what is familiar, what is comfortable, what is consistent, and to trust God and go somewhere where he doesn't even know where he's going, just a place that God is sending him. I want to talk for a moment to people here that are stuck. Because Abraham's not the only one, right, that is faced with a situation where he is being called to leave behind something that is comfortable, that is familiar, that is consistent, and is challenged by that. No, I pastor some people. Yeah, there's some people that are part of City Point Community Church who are like Abraham in a similar situation, right? But it is not a leaving of hometown. It would be easy if it was just leaving Chicago. It would even be easy if it was just leaving the state of Illinois. It would be easier even if it was just leaving the country to go live somewhere else. But no, the thing that is challenging you is leaving behind the X. And so I want to talk to those that are stuck, right? That are stuck in that hard to say goodbye type of situation that Lauren Hill describes herself being in, right? I I want to describe, I want to talk to that person that is in that same place that Lauren found herself in. I want to talk to you and drop some nuggets to you that will hopefully drive you toward liberation. 
I want to talk to those of you that are struggling, struggling with the X factor. Because the X factor is a real thing, ain't it? The X factor is really the real reason that for some of us, we take two steps forward, but then two steps back. The the X factor is the reason that some friendships are strained because our friends are able to look things directly in the eye and call a spade a spade, and we don't like that. We get in our feelings because they call out what is obvious, and we want to play the denial game. The X factor strains friendships. The X factor has destroyed our confidence for some of us. We have begun to feel like we are nothing if we are not with that other person. Lauren Hill describes there in in the song, she says, as crazy as things have been, as crazy as this thing has been, I just can't be with nobody else. Somebody, you know exactly what she's talking about. There is this destroying of confidence that happens with the X factor, right? Where you convince yourself that nobody else wants me, or I'm not good enough for anybody else. The X factor, the X factor. The The X factor will cause otherwise intelligent people to make stupid decisions. Yes, I said stupid on purpose. The X factor will make us do all of those things. The X factor is the reason that we are turning down really decent, good prospects, right? People that would be good to us, people that would be good for us, but we turn them down because the X factor keeps us thinking, wishing, hoping, wondering, if I were to get into another relationship, how will that impact my ability to be available just in case this person comes back? The X factor got some of us all messed up, and I want to help liberate us today. I want to talk to those of us that are stuck. Stuck with the X factor. So the first thing that I want to say to you, those of you that are struggling with the X factor, is that you need to be willing to stare stuff in the face. You need to be willing to stare stuff in the face, right? And when you stare it in the face, I need you to be ready to simply call stuff what it is. For some of us, we function, we operate under uh, uh, willful, willful ignorance, right? Where we effectively know what the game is, we know what the situation really is of the relationship or situationship, but we are, for some reason, denying calling the spade a spade. Man, let me push y'all. Brother, sister, do not be afraid to stare this thing in the face and call it what it is. If it's friends with benefits, call it that. If it's an emotionally abusive relationship, call it that. If your confidence has been beat to hell, call it that. If you are with this person just because you are afraid of being vulnerable and putting yourself out there, call it that. If this person is raggedy and they just know how to push your buttons, call it that. But don't be afraid to be objective, right? And to call a spade a spade and call it and accept that it is what it is. Let me say to you secondly, the second thing that I want to push up on you is to be wary of wrapping your identity and value in another person. Be wary of wrapping your identity and value in another person. Um, It is really easy. I I can remember this happening in a long-term relationship. Um, I I can remember um, wrapping up identity, my own identity, in into what it meant to be this person's boyfriend, right? And some of you are experiencing that same thing. You start building friendships with other couples and you start building friendships with their friends and they build friendships with your friends. And so, right, like your identity becomes wrapped up in this thing. And so you end up dealing with the challenge of of even leaving because for you, it feels like I'm leaving an entire community, right? Uh, Or for some of us, like we receive validation through being validated by somebody else by being in relationship with them. Um, or through having proximity to them. And and for many people, right, like for some of you, that leaves you uh, in a situation where you maintain this availability to this ex or this cycle of this on again and this off again type of thing because you feel valued if if they value you. 
I need us to break away from this sense of only being valued when other people value us. Perhaps we can step into a, a more liberating space of being valued because God values us, of being valued because Jesus values us, of being valued because people, there are people in our community that love us unconditionally, like family that value us, not this external, uh, external uh, valuation that we need to come from someone else that is in a romantic relationship with us. Let me push on. Thirdly, I want to say to you, don't allow yourself to be defined by your relationship or your relationship status. For some people, for some people, they are affirmed, right, by dating or by being dated by somebody or by being somebody's girlfriend or by being somebody's boyfriend or being somebody's wife or being somebody's husband. And for some people, they maintain themselves in an abusive marriage simply because they don't want to have to drop the last name because they don't want to drop the status of marriage. And so they would rather abuse themselves than to disavow the relationship or to sever the relationship or to disavow that last name. Let me push us to stop with that kind of, I'm going to use this word that I used a couple weeks ago, that kind of stinking thinking that caught, that reduces us down to the value uh, of this social affirmation that comes along with being, a, being in a relationship. We have to see ourselves as more than that. Let me say to you fourth and finally, remember that some things that feel good to you are not good for you. What Lauren describes here in the song is about like how it feels um, being like back with this ex, right? And and the challenge of um, what feels good not being good for her. She also picks up this same theme in a song um, a little bit later in the album called When It Hurts So Bad. Why does it, it, it's called why, when it hurts so bad, but the, the, the tag of the song is when it hurts so bad, why does it feel so good? Let, re, let me remind us that some things that feel good to us are not good for us. I know it might feel great with the affirmation. I know it might feel great being wrapped up in the arms of that other person. I know that it might feel great like believing that like if we give it one more shot like it is going to work out like I I know that all of that stuff feels great but at some point at some point it always comes back to with the exes the breakup cycle continues because you run into that same snag that has always broken the relationship down and it happens over and over and over again. And the heartbreak comes back, the anger comes back, sometimes the sleeplessness comes back, the ratchetness comes back, right? Like we start acting out the body um, when that thing happens again, that cheating happens again, that argument happens again, that cussing out happens again, that inconsistency happens again, that not being able to rely on your word happens again. When you fill in the blank of your thing with your ex. It happens again, you break up again, and you start that cycle all over again, and you end up going back because of that part of it that feels so good. But I need you to remember that there is also all that stuff that feels so bad and that hurts so deeply and that pains us so deeply. And you need to say to yourself and believe this in your heart that you deserve better than that. And that's at the root of it for some of us is that we feel we we deep down believe that we don't deserve any better than that. Let me push against that spirit. Let me challenge that spirit. You deserve better than that. I, I, I'll close out with this, um, this piece to the story because the story doesn't end there, right? So Lord tells me, it's time to let her go. This is, this is January-ish and um, call it not even 30, day, 30 days later, I am at this fashion show at the Park West um, up in uh, Lincoln Park. Um, I used to own a tailoring company, and so I had these clothes in a fashion show. And I run into this sister, this fine sister that I recognized who attended the church that I was a youth pastor at, and she was an announcer. I didn't know her, but, um, but I was checking her out a little bit. 
and I literally came around the corner after getting my clothes from the, the models, came around the corner and I almost literally run into um, this woman. And um, this woman's name was Carla Evans and her name is now, because of that chance meeting, her name is now Carla Davis. Um, and there's a little girl who runs around our home named Layla Davis who exists because of that, that chance meeting of us almost nearly running into each other. But let, let me tell you the, the amazing thing about it. We started talking basically because of something that was even unrelated from, to dating. But we would not have been able to connect if I had still been in that relationship, still running around that cycle. One, because a certain caliber of person ain't about to play those games, right? With like, I'm kind of dating somebody, kind of not. Like somebody that's legit, like my wife, like, they are the type that are like, all right, when you figure out your situation, come holler at me, and if I am still available, then we can talk. And so one, I was available, but, but, but two, like, I had done the psychological work, or at least had begun to do the psychological and the emotional work that I needed to do to repair from that relationship, to even be ready to be in a serious relationship with somebody like her. I wanted to share the end of that story because... I need you to understand that there is an end to your story, right? That there is something after the X, that there is something after the letting go, that, that, there, is, that, that there is a healthy relationship, that there is um, um, something that can leave you feeling fulfilled, that you are able to pour out your full self and your full love and to receive that same thing in return. There is better out there but you gotta be willing to deal with the X factor. Let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, I thank you today for allowing me to uh, push those that are being challenged by the X factor. Um, those that are in that place like Lauren, where they are saying, you let go and I will let go too. I pray in Jesus' name that you will give them the courage, that you will build them up, God, that you will give them that fortitude to make these tough decisions and stick to their decisions. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. That's the end of class for today. I appreciate y'all checking in on me. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.